Welcome. Welcome to a special practice devoted to the shoulders, to the neck, to understanding how the two relate and how we can clear congestion or pain in that area. We're going to start by taking a seat in seated Vajrasa. With the shoulders rolled back, the palms turned up to the sky and the eyes closed. With the eyes closed, allow the senses to turn inwards and begin to feel the breath. Allow the inhalation to lengthen the front spine and let the exhalation move the musculature of the back down the back and begin to feel the spaciousness that's coming to the front trunk, the ascendance of the sternum, the inner walls of the sternum, the length of the collarbones, a new broadness, a new spaciousness. Let the roots of the thighs press down so they're not bulging up and in this way feel the abdomen become longer, more spacious as it rises up from the descent of the front thighs. Keeping the face soft, the face quiet, gently bend the elbows and press the palms together in front of the sternum bone. Press the palms evenly from the base of the hand through the palm all the way to the tips of the fingers so there's an even pressure and use this pressure to help move both of the shoulders back the front shoulder girdle moving backwards. Press the dorsal spine, the spine between the shoulder blades forward to penetrate, to push the sternum open to the thumbs. In this way, inhabiting more and more the space between the lungs, the sternum bone. Allowing the chin to drop down slightly and with an exhalation, surrendering the brain to the sternum, to the heart. And then gently releasing the hands and slowly, gently opening the eyes. Starting now with some shoulder openers. So still in Vajrasana, bring the hands behind you, interlock the fingers together, roll the shoulders back and stretch the arms. So we're not trying to lift the arms too high. If we lift the arms too high, we risk letting the front shoulder come forward in the effort to lift it high. What we really want to sense is that the entire front cuff of the shoulder is moving backwards and that the shoulder blades are moving down the back and into the back to open the chest and the arm muscles are wrapping around the arm bones. And then exhale and release. So change in the interlock, let's explore that on the other side. Keep the cervical spine long, the jaw relaxed, Keep stretching the arms back, moving the front shoulder backwards, the front shoulder girdle backwards over and over again and charging the arms, keeping them strong, the elbows straight, the biceps, the triceps wrapped around the humerus bone and the shoulder blades pressing into the upper back to open the chest. Keep checking the neck, the cervical spine, that it doesn't get short, that it doesn't get tight. Keep rolling the front shoulders back. And then exhale and release and place the hands on the thighs by Drasan. And now coming to a simplified Garudasan, lifting the arms up, bring the right arm across using your bent left arm to hook it, to pull it across. And as you pull the right arm across, keep lowering the right shoulder away from the ear. Don't let it rise up. And then exhale and release, changing sides, bring the arms back up. This time bring the left arm across, use the right arm, bending it to hook it towards you. And make sure to press the left shoulder down away from the ear. Feel the part of the arm, the shoulder that's stretching and try and link it in sensation through the shoulder to the rest of the body so it doesn't remain isolated. And then exhale and release. So now go ahead and place your hands on the mat and spread the fingers, the thumbs widely, evenly. And then make sure that the inner elbows are rolling forward the way that I'm rolling my arms. So the inside edge of the elbow is rolling forward, but the forearm is turning in so that you can press down into the heel of the hand. So there's a double spiral happening in the arm. The upper arm, the top half of the arm is rolling out and the forearm is rolling in to connect. Continuing this work, now go ahead and turn your palms open so the fingers are pointing away from each other and you can really feel the spiral of the arm. 
Place the hand in that way. Make sure the fingers are spread, the thumb is spread. Push down into the heels of the hands and make the experience of the arms spiraling open, the inner elbow facing forward, the shoulders broad. Press down, make that firmness. Keep the trapezius muscles moving down the back. And then releasing and now changing the hands and turning the fingers completely towards you. Pushing down into the heels of the hands, so really stretching the inner arm. Again, keep the shoulders broad so the cervical spine, the neck have a chance to be long, the jaw soft. And try to push evenly into the heels of the hands and to keep the fingers and the thumb spread with a nice wide distance between them. And then sitting back, just lift the heel of the hand off the floor and push into the heel of the hand without pressing it into the floor. So you start to bring a stretch to the palm. You can lift the thumb to really extend through the palm. Feel the fingers. And then exhale and release. So coming up to standing now, we're going to use the wall. So standing with your feet wider than hip distance apart. Make sure that the tailbone is tucked forward, the buttocks are moving towards the heels, and come down and bring the upper back onto the wall. Stretch the arms to the side and spiral the arms open so that the palms face forward. So the front shoulders are really rolling back. Again, we're finding that spiral in the arms, the eyes of the elbows facing forward. Keep the neck long, the front throat soft, so you're not putting the tension there. And keep making the experience of the front shoulder girdle rolling back the spiral in the arms, in the upper arms, the triceps. And now keeping that spiral in the upper arms and the triceps, turn the forearms the other way so the palms can face the wall. So you now have a double spiral in the arms. See how when we turn the palms in, often the front shoulder will want to collapse forward. Your work is to keep pressing the front shoulder back, spiraling the upper arms open as you roll the forearms in. And then exhale and release. And now we're going to come to a parigasan using the wall, a standing side stretch. So placing yourselves an arm's distance away from the wall with the right hand side of your body facing the walls. Reach with your right hand and put your right hand on the wall. Stretch your left arm up and exhale over and find the wall with your left hand. Then you can move your right hand further as you try to move your left hand back. So this mirrors the action of the scapula that we're looking for. The bottom shoulder blade moving forward and the top shoulder blade moving back. And then exhale and release, coming now to the other side. So the left-hand side of the body is facing the wall. The left hand is on the wall. Stretch the right arm up. Come and find the wall. And once you've found the wall, go ahead and try to move the left hand slightly forward. And then to walk the top hand, the right hand back. So you're finding the action of the shoulder blades, the scapula, pushing the bottom shoulder blade forward and the top shoulder blade back. And then exhale and release and refine Tadasan. So moving on, still using the wall because it's such a wonderful way to explore the shoulder, the arm area. I want you to stand with the right hand side of your body close to the wall and your right arm stretched behind you. Roll the front of the right shoulder back and come right into the wall so you're flush, so the inner arm is pressing against the wall. Make sure the front abdomen is long. Keep spiraling the arm, feeling the spiral of the arm, working through the tricep, the bicep, coming through the inner elbow. Keep the elbows straight. Press the hand to the wall. Front shoulders rolling back. Feel the broadness coming to the chest. And now exhale and release, changing sides. So the left side of the body is against the wall. The front of the left shoulder rolling back and then step right in so you're flush against the wall. If you feel a lot of tension, you can have the hand closer to the hips. Make sure your tailbone is tucked so the front abdomen is long so you're not overarching your lumbar. And make the experience of all the sensations of what happens when the front of that left shoulder rolls back. How can you spiral the arm, the tricep, the bicep, the palm pressing to the wall. Make sure the cervical spine stays long, the chest feeling more and more broadness, the collarbones lengthening. And then exhale and release. Coming to the other side now. One more time. We're going to add something in just to increase the sensation a little bit. So standing with the right side of the body flush to the wall, the right arm stretched behind you. If you can, bring the hand a little bit higher, more in line with the shoulder. If you can't, keep it where it was. Again, roll the front of the shoulder back strongly. 
And now reach with your left hand, place your left hand behind you and try to reach with your fingertips for the wall. And in this way, also roll the front of the left shoulder back. So now both front shoulder cuffs are rolling back. The scapula are pressing down and into the upper back to help open the chest. Keep the firmness of that right elbow. And then exhale and release. And changing sides. Coming onto the left side. Once again, take the time to roll the front of the left shoulder back as you stretch the left arm. Press into the heel of the hand. Integrate the elbow. And now wind your right arm around behind you. And see if your fingertips can touch the wall. Press into the wall with the fingertips. And then roll the front of the right shoulder back too. So both front shoulders rolling back. The deltoids rolling from the front to the back. The scapula rolling back and down. Relax the front throat. Allow the cervical spine to be long. Keep the left elbow integrated. Press into the left heel of the hand. And feel the chest broaden and lift without arching the lumbar. And then exhale and release. Now coming back to one of the poses we've already done, just to feel the difference. Make sure the hips are tucked. Stretch the arms diagonally away from you. Really find the spiral in the arms. From the root of the arms, the arm is spiraling open. The front deltoids are rolling back. The scapula are going in and down. The chest is broadening. The triceps, the biceps are rolling the arm open. The inner elbow is facing open. The palms are facing open. And now keeping the spiral of the upper arm from the elbow to the wrist, roll the arm in without losing that opening spiral of the upper arm. Maintain that double spiral, the front shoulders rolling back, the palms pressing towards the wall. And then exhale and release. So we can feel the difference already in the shoulders, the arm, the neck area. Let's continue this. Standing in Tadasan, I'm going to turn around so you can see the work. Bring your left hand behind you and hold on to your right tricep with your left hand. And with your hand, roll the tricep open. So the front shoulder is rolling back and the arm is spiraling, the upper arm is spiraling. And then bend the right elbow and with your right hand, take hold of your left elbow, your left tricep, bicep area. And roll also this. Now stand with your back against the wall, so you can use the wall as reference to see where the gaps are, where there's sensation, where the wall and the back and the shoulders and the arm meet. And keep trying to roll the front shoulders back, to lengthen the collarbones, to roll the front shoulders back. Make sure the lumbar doesn't get overarched when you do this. Press the tailbone down and forward and stretch the front waist, lift the front chest. And now I'm coming in the way from the wall to show you we're going to change sides. So undoing your hands, stretch the arms now, finding Tadasan, feel the new sensation in Tadasan. And now changing arms. So the right arm is going to bend first and take hold of the left arm. And you're going to really use the hand to roll the arm to get sensation before bending the left elbow and taking hold of the right arm with your left hand. And then go ahead and turn around so your back can again face the wall. Make sure your inner feet are touching, your legs are in Tadasan. Tuck the tailbone forward, stretch the front waists. Roll the front shoulders back, feel your collarbones lengthening. Press the shoulder blades in and down, in and down. And then exhale and release. Continuing this work, coming now to Gomukasan. So bringing the left arm behind you first, the palm between the shoulder blades, lift the right arm up. And with your right hand, reach for your left hand. If you can't reach, take a strap. Again, being careful not to arch the lower back in these shoulder opening movements to keep the lumbar long so the opening can really move into the shoulders. And now using the wall, try to bring your top elbow tip to the wall behind you and then your bottom elbow tip towards the wall behind you. Stretch the top elbow to the sky, stretch the bottom elbow down to the floor. Keep trying to roll the front shoulders back and to press the dorsal spine forward to open the chest. Feel the movement of the scapula pressing in, moving down, the armpit stretching. And then exhale and release. And now changing sides, Gomukasan. So bring your right arm behind you, spiral it, roll it open, then bend the elbow, place it between the shoulder blades. And then lift the left arm up. Spiral the arms so the palm faces back and then bend the elbow and reach, see what you can get. And using the wall for guidance, so we create more sensation in the back body. Standing in Tadasan, begin to see if your top elbow tip can come to the wall. 
if the bottom elbow tip can also feel the sensation of the wall, if you can push the hands between the shoulder blades forward to open the chest, stretch the elbow tips apart from each other, and now keep the front shoulders rolling back, feel the armpits stretching. Now sides of the neck even, cervical spine still lengthening, still growing. And then exhale and release. We find Tadasan, shoulders rolled back before releasing completely. Now come and stand facing the wall. Place your hands on the wall, arms straight. Make sure the arms are spiraling. The triceps are spiraling open. The shoulders are broad. The trapezius muscles are moving down the back and the eyes of the inner elbow are facing up to the sky. Press into the heels of the hands and spread your fingers, spread your thumbs. Integrate the elbows firmly, keep broadening the shoulders. Now start to move the hands up without losing any of that integration. As you move the arms up higher, the hands up higher, keep spiraling the arms in such a way that the inner elbows are facing the sky. The triceps are rolling open. The trapezius muscles are moving down the back. Keep the arms parallel, the clavicles lengthening. Keep stretching the arms, rolling the triceps open, rolling the forearms in, finding that double spiral. Press the back ribs in to open the chest. Keep the shoulders broad. Soft, smooth breath. Just keep feeling that integration, lengthening the arms, wrapping the muscles around the bone, keeping the broadness. Rest the forehead on the wall to keep the head quiet. Keep moving the shoulders and the triceps to the floor and raise the armpits and the biceps up to the ceiling, pressing evenly into the heels of the hands. And then exhale, gently releasing, bring the hands down halfway, still keeping the triceps rolling out, the forearms rolling in, the shoulders broad. And then exhale and release. Stabilize, centralize. See how the arms are changing shape, the way they're holding themselves, the awareness they have of themselves. Coming now to a chataranga, but standing up and using the hands on the wall. So placing the hands on the wall in line with the shoulders, the width of the shoulders. Stand close enough to the wall so the elbows are bent. Make sure the elbows are facing down, the collarbones are long. And now lift the heels of the hands up and spread the thumbs so the thumbs are moving towards the floor. Then press the heels of the hands down again. In this way, the hands are firm, even, stable, spread, elbows in, shoulders broad, coming on to the balls of the feet. Begin to push yourselves forward into a chataranga. Maintain the body aligned in tadasan, the tailbone moving forward as you bend the elbows and move closer and closer to the wall. Keep the shoulders broad, feel the arms engaged evenly, the elbows down, the muscles of the arms firm, even, and then pushing away from the wall, re-engage. Then coming back in, again maintaining the tadasan action of the body. Shoulders broad, elbow tips down, clavicles lengthening and sternum lifting. Try to have an even engagement of the muscles of the arms. Pushing yourself away. Now come a little bit further. Again, roll the eyes of the elbows up to the sky. Find the spiral of the arms before bending the elbows, coming again into chataranga. Tailbone moving forward, elbow tips down, shoulders broad. Lift the sternum, press evenly into the heels of the hands, the knuckles should be flush on the wall, and then pushing yourself away, and release, roll the front shoulders back. And let's now move into our next pose. So from Chataranga against the wall, we're going to come to Chataranga on the floor, but using blocks for support, two blocks. The first block is going to be put on the floor horizontally, it's going to go underneath the front pelvis. And the second block is going to be pointing vertically and it's going to be underneath our sternum. So then go ahead and lie down on the blocks, making the adjustment needed so you feel them to be right in the right place. And then bring the hands onto the floor, the fingers facing forward, the elbows pointing back, the shoulders are broad. Make sure that the elbows are close to the ribs, don't let them be wide. Charge the legs, extend the legs fully, Extend the knee to the heel and broaden the backs of the calves. Squeeze the knees. Push the front thighs to the sky. Tuck the tailbone down. Press firmly down into the heels of the hands and particularly into the index fingers and the thumbs. Roll the shoulders to the waist and point the outer elbows back. The cervical spine lengthening. The shoulders broad. The trapezius muscles moving down the back. And 
out and exhale and release. So we can feel how we can experience Chaturanga without strain on the shoulders and neck. So that way we can really make an exploration of the pose. So we're going to repeat this using just one block this time. And this block is going to go under the front pelvis. So lowering yourselves down. Then moving the hands back, fingers facing forward. Have evenness between the hands, elbows pressing back. Roll the shoulders to the waist. Point the outer elbows back. Lift the fronts of the thighs and extend the calves to the heels. Spread the upper calf muscles strongly. Keep charging the forearms back, pressing to lift. Trapezius muscles moving down the back. Diaphragm moving forward. And then exhale and release. Stretch the arms, broaden the shoulders. And release completely. So now coming to a third version of Chaturanga with two blocks. The two blocks are going to be placed like this up on their height and they're going to hold the front shoulder girdle as we come to a Chaturanga. So placing the hands on the floor, make sure the thumbs are spread away from the index fingers, the fingers facing forward, the elbows charging back, and the blocks are right underneath the front shoulder girdle. Then straighten the legs and walk the feet in, tuck the tailbone, push the front thighs to the sky, squeeze the knees. And as you press in Chaturanga, charging the forearms back, Keep lifting the front shoulder with the block. So you really feel how the front shoulder can lift. It doesn't have to cave down in your chaturanga. Pressing the front shoulder girdle up and back. Engage the shoulder blades, the scapula in. Open the sternum, move the sternum forward. And then exhale and release, pushing back, stretching the arms. Feeling the arms spiral open. Refining the spiral that you may have lost in your chaturanga. Sides of the neck even and long. And release completely. So we're going to do those three chaturangas, each one of them one more time. So the first setup, where the block is underneath the front pelvis, and the other block is on the vertical and it's underneath the sternum plate. So it helps remind us to move the sternum plate forward. So lying down, position yourself. On the second time, it'll be more comfortable. Each time you do it, it will make more sense. Make sure the elbows are moving back, the front shoulders are moving back, and the front shoulder girdle is lifting up. Charge the legs. Push the front thighs to the sky. Broad on the backs of the calves. Charge the heels, the ankles. Keep pressing into the heels of the hands, into the thumb, into the index finger. Lifting the front shoulders up and moving the sternum forward on the block. Tailbone pressing down, but sternum forward. Shoulders back. And now cervical spine long. Feel the upper back working, the shoulder blades pressing in. And then exhale and release. So pushing yourselves up, we're going to move one of the blocks. Coming now to our second version, where the block is right underneath the front pelvis, and we're doing the work of the sternum on our own, remembering the imprint of the block under the sternum without actually having it there. So finding the right place, bring the hands into position, the elbows moving back. Roll the shoulders to the waist and keep pointing the outer elbows back. Turning the toes under, charge the legs, squeeze the knees, and then pushing into the hands, find chataranga. Try to move the sternum forward, tailbone down towards the brick, sternum forward, charging the legs, front shoulders back, trapezius muscles down the back, neck lengthening from the trunk. And then exhale and release. And now coming to our third, final version where we use the two blocks to support to lift the front shoulder girdle. If the blocks are painful, you can always put a little padding on the block. And now coming into position, so you have to line yourself up so that the blocks are right underneath the front shoulder girdle. And then move the hands back so that as much as possible, the forearms are perpendicular to the floor. And then when you feel yourself ready, charge the legs, tuck the tailbone down so the buttocks not pushing up to the sky. Push evenly into both heels of the hands. We always favor one arm more than the other. Find which arm that is and make that evenness. Feel the front shoulder girdle lifting, the sternum moving forward, the tailbone moving down, and the cervical spine lengthening out of the trunk. Keep lifting the front shoulder girdle up. Feel the back body starting to work, the upper back starting to work. And then exhale and release. Putting one block on top of the other, stretch the arms. Spiral the arms open so that the eyes of the elbows are facing to the sky. The palms are pressing into the side of the block. 
The arms are parallel, move the trapezius muscles down the back, refining that spiral in the arms and the muscle fibers and the skin fibers, placing that, integrating the elbow, not letting the elbow bend, lifting the lower elbow, the skin of the outer elbow into the elbow joint. And then exhaling and releasing. Forehead to the floor, arms by the side of the body, child's pose. With an exhalation, relax completely into the ground. Soft, smooth inhalation. Soft, smooth exhalation, releasing all tension from the work that may have built up. Allow the shoulders to melt, to rest completely, the arms to melt. And now bring the hands behind the back, cross the thumbs together, stretch the arms up, rolling the front shoulders up so that as the arms are lifting, you're not letting the front shoulders drop to the ground. Keep stretching the arms, stretching the fingers. And then exhale, release the arms all the way back down to the ground. Release, relax completely. And then rolling gently up and let's continue with our work. So we're going to be using the blocks to create a supported Pariyankasana type action that will free the shoulders, the neck, the chest. So one block is vertical and one block is horizontal, just like I've placed it. Take a first blanket and roll the blanket. And then having rolled the blanket, place it on the horizontal block. Then take your second blanket and again roll the blanket. And with this roll, you're going to have to decide how far you need to roll. If you need more support, you're going to make a bigger roll. If you're a little more open in the neck and shoulders, you'll make a half roll. Then place that blanket on top of the other blanket on the horizontal block. Having pressed it down, secured them well, making sure there's a little bit of space between the blanket and the vertical block, sit down in front of the vertical block with your legs stretched out in front of you, the inner ankles touching, the inner feet touching. Hold onto the mat with your hands and begin to lie down so that the block is pressing into the shoulder blades, into the scapula. Now find the blankets, find the roll, increase the roll if you need a little more lift, if you need a little more support in the base of the cervical and lie your neck, your head back so that it's supported on the blanket. You should be comfortable. If you're uncomfortable, you need more height, more support, adjust. Take the time to come up, get more blankets, take everything you need for comfort. And then bending the elbows, hold onto your elbow tips with your hands. Pariyankasana arms. So the block is pressing into the shoulder blades. The front thighs are pressing down into the floor. The legs are charged, the heels are pressed down, the feet are alert. Keep trying to stretch more and more the front abdominal cavity, the front waists, the armpit chest. Use the fingertips to pull the elbow tips backwards and to pull the elbow tips down. And at the same time, press the block into the upper back to open the chest. Feel also the spiral of the upper arms and the action of the trapezius muscles moving down the back helping the shoulder blades to press in to open the chest, to make that imprint of the chest, to bring that broadness, that space, a stretchingness of the diaphragm of the intercostal muscles. And now stretch the arms straight back behind you, parallelizing the arms. If you need to adjust the blankets, this is a good time to do so before we change sides. Squeeze the elbows straight, re-spiral your arms. And then changing the cross of the arms again with your hands, take hold of the elbow tips and resettle into Pariyankasana. Press the quadricep muscles down into the floor. Press the heels down, keep the feet alert. Pull with your fingertips the elbows back to the wall behind you and down to the floor as the block presses up, opening the chest. Keep relaxing the face, the neck should be supported, the sides of the neck even, the face quiet, soft. Moving the trapezius muscles away from the ears, pressing the front shoulders back, finding more and more action and work from the upper back. So we stop relying on the front shoulder and the caving in of the chest, and we start bringing the upper muscles of the back into play to do the work of the arms, to help to hold us, to support us. And in this way, the chest has broadness and freedom, the lungs, and then re-stretch the arms back, parallelize, squeeze, before releasing, hands to the floor, and slowly, gently, make your way back up. Legs still in front of you, bring the fingertips to the floor behind you, fingertips facing forward, find Dandasan in Pashimottanasan. 
roll the front shoulder girdle back. Press the shoulder blades, the upper back in, open the chest. Stretch the front waist, stretch the abdominal cavity. And then exhale and release. So coming to our next pose, you're going to need two blankets. So put your blocks to the side. Keep one blanket rolled just as it is so that it's like a little bolster. And with the other blanket, you're going to unroll it and just fold it in half. And then fold it again in half and place it in front of your rolled blanket. So making a T. Then go ahead and sit on the folded blanket and lie back and then scoot yourselves backwards so that your shoulders can come to the floor and you can roll the front shoulders back, roll the triceps open. And that rolled blanket is again pressing the upper back in, pressing it open to the sky. So finding the spiral in the arms, pressing the front shoulders back, pressing the back ribs in, chest open, sides of the neck even and trapezius muscles moving away from the ears to keep the groin of the neck deep and long. Feel that spiral extending all the way out to the palms of the hands so the palms are open with the spiral. Keep pressing the upper back in with the action of the rolled blanket. Moving the sacrum towards the heels. Keeping the front abdomen long in that dandasan action that we just had in Pashimottanasan. The knees even, the feet facing forward. Observing with the breath, with the touch of the breath, everywhere in the body, the different sensations of this openness. And now just lightly sitting up, just enough to move the rolled blanket and placing yourselves back down. So your buttocks are on the folded blanket, extending the arms to the side, re-roll the front shoulders back, find the spiral in the arms, the work of the upper back. Bring the feet closer and reach with your hands for the ankles, hold the ankles firmly, make sure the feet are parallel. Lift the inner arches of the feet, lift the inner ankles. Keep the front shoulders rolled back and press the arms down as you begin to lift the hips up. Chatush Padasan. Keep pressing into the feet to lift the buttocks up higher. Keep the legs parallel, the inner knees coming towards each other, not apart. Keep rolling the shoulders back. See if you can reach more with your hands for the front of the shin, gripping firmly. Pressing the arms down, lifting the buttocks up. Try to bring the curvature to the middle back and the upper back, not the lumbar spine. And as you arch the upper back, press the shoulder blades, the dorsal spine, into the upper chest to open the chest to broaden. Find the actions of all the shoulder work we've done, trapezius muscles moving down the back, arms spiraling, inner elbows up towards the sky, front shoulders moving back, back ribs pressing in. Lift the buttocks higher and higher to bring more openness to the chest, more length to the abdominal cavity. And then exhale and release. Coming down, move the blanket now so the lower back can be stable on the floor. Roll again the front shoulders back, stretch the arms to the side, the arms are spiraling, the sides of the neck even. Make sure the sacrum is moving towards the heels so the lumbar is long, the abdomen relaxed. And then exhale and release, rolling over, coming up to sitting and preparing for our next pose. Moving everything out of the way, all we're going to need is one block. When you have that block, go ahead and lie down on your back with your knees bent, your feet on the floor, facing forward. You have two heights for the block. Choose the height that feels right for you. If your lower back is sensitive, take the lower height. If you have no problems with the lower back, go with the highest height. Then pressing, lifting the buttocks up, place that block right underneath the tailbone. So below the waistband of the trousers, really the lower part of the spine, the coccyx, the tailbone. Roll the front shoulders back, keep the sides of the neck long, even. Keep feeling the front shoulders rolling back so that really the chest is opening and then stretching the arms, interlock the fingers behind the block. Press the arms down to the floor and with this action, lift the chest up, press the back ribs in, press the shoulder blades in. Lift the toes off the floor so that you're pressing more and more into your feet and into your heels. Feel the block pressing the tailbone up and at the same time move the sacrum towards the knees so the lumbar stays long and the curvature comes to the middle upper back. Keep re-rolling the front shoulders back, spiraling the arms, feeling the eyes of the elbows open, the triceps, the biceps spiraling, the back armpit coming to the front armpit. Trapezius muscles moving down the back, directionalizing with each exhalation the sacrum towards the knees, and with each inhalation drawing the pubic bone up to the sternum, 
feeling that length coming to the waists, that length, that spaciousness coming to the sternum, to the intercostal muscles, to the lungs. And now press the dorsal spine and the shoulder blades forward to open the chest as you roll the shoulders back. Press into the feet, lift, charge. Activate the entire upper back to open the chest, feeling the length of the clavicles, the evenness of the arms, the pressure of the arms pressing down into the floor to help you to rise up more. Make sure your knees don't start to come apart. The thighs parallel, the knees moving forward. Keep the skin of the back armpit rolling to the front armpit to make sure the front shoulder stays broad. Now release the hands and just have the arms stretched to the side. Still spiraling, still opening. Making more and more understanding and making sure that your neck is still lengthening out of the trunk. Don't let the retraction come in. Don't start pressing too hard into the back of the neck. Make it a shoulder pressure, an arm pressure. The limbs really working, spiraling from the root, from the source of the limbs themselves, right? The chest, the upper back area. And then putting the hands on the buttocks, gently lift the hips up, move the blocks. And slowly coming down, making sure that your buttocks move towards your heels so that your lumbar has length, is supported by the floor. As you stretch the arms to the side, once again, pinning the front shoulders back, trapezius muscles moving down the back, spiraling the flesh of the arms, the muscle of the arms. And now bring the feet off the floor. Cross your right knee completely over your left and reach with your hands for your shins, for your ankles. Supine Yoga Mudra Sangha So feeling the hips broaden and open but not allowing the opening of the hips to detract from the openness of the front shoulders. As you reach for the feet and as you draw the legs closer towards you and you feel the hip opening, keep the clavicles long and the front of the shoulders rolling back and the upper back engaged. And then uncross the legs, changing sides, bringing now the left leg over the right, reaching for your shins. Again, not allowing the sensation of the hips to detract from the opening of the shoulders. Keep rolling the front shoulders firmly back, keeping that length in the collarbones, that openness in the front chest and sternum area. Sides of the neck are even and long, faces passive and quiet, and keep the upper back pressing in to open the chest from inside. And then exhale and release, uncross the legs, and bring the feet to the floor. Restretch the arms to the side, deep inhalation, deep exhalation. And now rolling over to the side and pushing yourselves back up, coming to our last pose, Shavasan. Using one blanket, which is going to be rolled in a specific way to really give support to both the cervical spine and the skull. So beginning the first roll, and then you're also going to roll from the other side of the blanket. So there are two rolls in one blanket. The first roll is going to go underneath the cervical, so it wants to be a little bit smaller. And the second roll is going to go underneath the base of the head, so it wants to be a little bit larger. Again, you can adjust once you're lying down. You can fine-tune the details. So turning around, stretching the legs straight, the heels in line with the corners of the mat, moving the buttocks towards the heels. And then go ahead and lie down, find the blanket with your hands, and make sure the bottom roll is supporting the base of the cervical, and that the top roll is supporting the base of the skull in such a way that the head is not pitching back. And then roll the shoulders back. Stretch the arms, spiral the arms. Turn the legs open, inner knees to the outer knees, inner feet to the outer feet. And then close the eyes. And with an exhalation, release completely into the ground, into Shavasana allowing the earth and the blankets to support the body as you rest, as you relax. Having a soft, smooth and natural breath, no force, no overdoing or no underdoing. Just resting and allowing the natural flow of the breath to course through you. Spreading evenness, aeration and softness everywhere in the system. With an exhalation, relax completely the face. Allow the eyes to rest completely in the eye sockets, the cheeks to be soft, the chin, the throat. Let the shoulders rest completely on the floor, the front shoulders rolling back with gravity. 
and that softness, that yieldingness of the shoulders trickling down the arms, through the elbows, the forearms, into the wrists, into the palms, into the fingers, into the floor. Observing the ribs that are releasing their grip on the lungs, the lungs soft, porous, expanding. The diaphragm relaxed. The entire back resting on the floor, the hips heavy, the groin soft. Relaxing all of the organs of excretion, of digestion, of reproduction. Observing the thigh muscles completely relaxing their grip on the thigh bone. And allowing that soft passiveness to trickle down the length of the legs through the knees, the shins, the ankles, the feet. Until even the soles of the feet feel porous and soft and melting. Each exhale releasing more and more into the ground. Liquefying. Dissolving. A complete letting go, a complete surrender. Resting in this yieldingness. Observing from a relaxed state of detachment the sensations of relaxation, the sensations of softness, of heaviness, of lightness. Allowing a deep restoration to be taking place in the cells, in the bones, in the nerves, in the muscles, the skin, everything soothed and soft and resting. Loka samastaha sukhinho bhavantu Om shanti 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 May the universe know love, may the universe know peace. And may we help all those that we come into contact with to feel the same. Om, peace, peace, peace. And now inhaling in through the crown of the head and exhaling out through the soles of the feet. Gently move the palms to the front abdomen, resting them there. In this way, slowly coming out of Shavasana. And then when you feel ready, gently roll over to the right-hand side of the body, resting peaceful, before gently using the hands and pushing yourselves back up to sitting. Pulling the buttock bones back and out to the side, bend the elbows and press the palms together in front of the chest. Close the eyes. Keep the front shoulders rolled back, the collarbones long. Observe the difference in that area now. How much more awareness there is, engagement of the upper back, lifting of the sternum. And then softly, gently, release the hands and welcome back to your days. I hope your necks, your shoulders feel delightful, feel clear, and that you'll be able to bring this work with you into your practice, into your classes, and have it transform the way that you use the arms, the shoulders, the neck. Namaste. Thank you. I hope we practice again together soon.